All right, in this video, we're actually going to continue the gravity code in our program, but allow our ball here to bounce as though it were, say, a tennis ball. So right now, what I have is if I press the up arrow, my ball will bounce, and it's affected by gravity. If I were to pick it up and drop it from up here, it actually accelerates as it falls, and you can see that the velocity number on the side accelerates until it hits the ground and then immediately stops. That's not what actually happens if you were to drop a tennis ball on Earth. It would bounce a couple times. So I'm going to stop my program. Now to let you see what I'm doing, I'm just grabbing the up arrow block of code here, the touch and ground up arrow, and I'm just going to move it out to the side. I'm not going to throw it out or anything. We're just going to get it out of the way for now. And right now here we say if touching ground set velocity to zero. That's what we have to change. So I'm going to throw that out and we have to put in some type of code that tells the ball it's supposed to bounce when it touches ground. The else statement stays the same. This is the free fall block of code that we made in my prior video. So what we need to do is you'll notice that when you drop a ball, it actually changes direction when it bounces, right? It, the velocity now changes and it's going in a positive number because the ball bounces back towards you off the ground. So to do this, we need to set velocity to velocity times, and I'm going to grab the times block in operators, times negative one to change the direction of velocity. Then, like we've done in earlier videos, we need to remind the ball that it has a relationship to velocity. So we're going to say set y to its y position plus velocity, just like we've done in the prior videos when creating our blocks. And you can see it here on my screen. So we're going to set y to y plus velocity. And let's put that in the if touching ground part of our statement. Let's see what happens. If I pick up my ball and drop it, it bounces. And it bounces forever and it bounces without losing any momentum. So if I were to stop it and if I were to drop it from here, it's a little bounce forever. If I were to pick it up and drop it from here, it's a big bounce. And every time it actually goes back to the height I dropped it. That's not how Earth actually works. Each time the ball kind of loses momentum, bouncing less and less. So let's add another block here saying set velocity to velocity divided by two. So what I'm doing now is I'm actually cutting the velocity value in half every time the ball bounces. So let's drag that up in our if statement here. Now it bounces, 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 and eventually stops bouncing. Or does it? You'll notice that the velocity number up here is kind of freaking out. It's getting infinitely close to zero, but it's never actually reaching zero. And if I look at my ball, it's actually twitching here and bouncing infinitely. So it does, in fact, go ahead and kind of lose momentum and stop bouncing. On this count, looks like after about three bounces, it sort of stops. And if you want to go ahead and drop a tennis ball next to wherever you are right now, you'll see it bounces about three times. But it does eventually stop. Our ball in scratch does not stop. Here's why. We need to actually keep track of the bounce count and tell the computer, you know what, after it bounces, let's say three times, stop. So we're going to create another variable, and I'm going to call this variable bounce count. Now, just like our gravity and velocity, we do need to set the bounce count to zero or a number every time. So when the ball first starts or when the program first starts, the bounce counter is zero. I'm actually going to pull out the code that we just wrote and just put it off to the side here. And we're going to add another if else statement. So we're going to say if and we're going to put that code into this if statement that we already wrote. And we're going to say if the bounce counter is, let's say, or bounce count is less than uh, 2. Let's pick 2 for now. Bounce count less than 2. We're going to go ahead and allow bouncing. Let's see what that does. Well, it didn't change anything. And here's why. First off, the bounce counter variable is not moving. That's because each time it bounces, we need to add one to the bounce counter. So I'm going to go ahead and say change bounce count by one. So now every time it bounces, bounce counter will actually add one to itself. Let's see what now it happens. Notice that the bounce counter is keeping track, and then it just kind of plummets and stops here, and it doesn't actually keep bouncing. So let's see, now it just doesn't work. And that's because I never actually finished the else statement. So we need to say set velocity to zero. So if the bounce count is less than two, go ahead and bounce, adding one to the bounce counter, and then else, once it's greater than two, stop bouncing, set velocity to zero. See what happens. There we go. 
That looks like a ball bouncing. And now I could change my bounce counter number if I wanted to here. So I could say something like five. And this will go ahead and change how often it bounces. Let's see what happens. But it kind of twitches at the end there. So I think somewhere around two or three looks relatively realistic. I'll go ahead and just simulate this again. But you get to kind of design your program. Now we have over off the side here the program that says how to jump every time we press the up key. We do need to modify this just slightly. And what that is, is every time you jump, we need to set the bounce counter back to zero as if the program were to restart. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the set bounce count to zero, and I'm just gonna place it directly above our set velocity with the amount that we wanna jump here. If I were to drag this back into my main forever, not into the if statements, into the actual forever loop, so it's like so, and again, I'll zoom out just so you can kind of see everything here. And when I press the green flag, if I press up, my ball bounces and falls each time. 